Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna use some art supplies to make some fun cards, and we're gonna use stamps from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. We're gonna start off with the window boxes um, stamp set, and the nice thing about this is they're kind of like wrought iron planters, so you'll be able to see through the iron bars, and you can really have a lot of fun with your stamping, and you don't have to do any masking. So this is gonna be the basis for our designs, and then we're gonna mix it up with some peg stamps. So I started looking through my collection, which is pretty big, and um, I was looking for some flower sets that I haven't used very much lately. So um, these I haven't used much, and these are the Autumn Glory and October Mums. I thought those were really pretty, and you could definitely change up colors for different seasons, although uh, your mums are generally a fall flower, and you don't see too many fall flowers, so I thought those would be fun. I also um, have these new geranium ones, and I thought those would be pretty mixed and matched together to make a nice full arrangement, and those are very summery, so really nice if you like to send cards this time of year. Um, also, this is really pretty, this Muscari and Hyacinth border, just because it's super simple. And then, of course, Thorny Rose. I have several of the Peg Stamps rose sets. Roses are my favorite, and I thought I would give that one a whirl. And then an oldie but a goodie, Auntie Strawberry Garden, because what's more summery than a, you know, box full of strawberries. So I thought these would be really fun to play with. So now let's take a look at what we made. So the first one I did was the strawberry patch one, and I thought this was really pretty, kind of like on a, a brick wall, very easy to do. I'll show you how to do bricks and shutters and windows. You just need to hint at a background. And this was a lot of fun, but I felt like I got a little too mushy there in the middle. So then I tried the um, Muscari and Hyacinth border. I really liked the way this looked, and I actually set it kind of down on the ground. I used a little shading to make it look like it was just kind of sitting down, but I did like the um, the little flowers, and I also liked the little spatter that I added. I thought it gave it a really summery feeling and a playful touch. Then I tried the rose, and the rose one did look nice and summery, but it wasn't my favorite, ironically. Usually the roses are. And so then I tried geraniums, because that one's new to me. I haven't really used the geranium set yet, and I like that all right, but it still wasn't my favorite one. My favorite one ended up being the one with the fall mums. But as you can see, um, you could send that any time of year by putting a pastel card base and some like fresher colors. You could definitely use this for spring. This is a set we're going to use in our demo today, but Obviously, the techniques are the same no matter what card you're going to make and what stamp set you have. So dig through your stash, and you can totally do this with what you have on hand. If you don't have a window box stamp, um, I will link to all these supplies in the video description, but if you don't have a window box stamp, you could always draw something with a permanent pen. Make sure that you use a permanent pen, though, because um, it could run. I'm going to use archival ink because that's waterproof, and I've just got a little square of watercolor paper that is four and a quarter by three inches. Um, I had a little pad of watercolor paper and just basically cut it in quarters so I could get four from each sheet. It was just a little small pad. So when I'm using like uh, window box stamps like this or any sort of stamps where I have a bunch that I'm trying to do, um, I will often just double mount them. So I'll take one mount and I will just put it on both sides just like that. Make sure you ink up your stamp really evenly and just look at it to make sure it looks shiny and then you'll know you've got a really good coating of ink. I try not to hit my edges on my block or um, any extra rubber with ink, like if you didn't have it trimmed closely, you wanna watch out for that because that can give you a halo image on your ink pad. So what I'm going to do is just stamp straight down, and I have my watercolor paper on a notepad just so that I have a little bit extra squish, and it also gives me some room if I wanna do any inking, and there we've got a really nice impression. Now if you don't have it stamped exactly straight, mine's a little crooked, that's okay because you can trim it down later uh, before you put it on your card. When I do my stamping, I want to start with my largest item first. And here are all the stamps that are in those sets that I plan on using. I'm going to start with this big flower, and I want to do it in purple. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can either spray the stamp with water and then color it with a crayon, or you can quickly dip your crayon into some water, and then you can color that on. Now, if you feel like it, it's going on really dry, you can mist the stamp, but generally I find a quick dip in the water uh, inks it up about perfectly. So then I'm going to stamp that down once, 
and then I can often turn it and do it again. Sometimes I'll need to spray it, but I think I can probably get another impression. There, I got two really good impressions just by uh, coloring on that stamp. Now I could spritz this and get a third, but I really don't have enough room for another one in there of this size. So the next thing I'm going to do is go with this open one. And the wonderful thing about this technique is that you don't have to know how to watercolor paint, but when you're done, it's gonna look like you hand watercolored this. So I'm gonna color it on here with this, um, with this orange and I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. So I think I need to dip that. It's, it's a little dry. If my stamp looked really wet, I would just be able to go right on with a crayon without dipping. So it does take you a little bit of time to figure out how wet or dry your stamp should be. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind and maybe practice on a scrap of paper a few times before you go on to your final project. And I think I'll maybe put this one more time, but since it's kind of drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spritz it. I'm just going to spritz it kind of, I'm going to see, let me move my paper there, that way I can show you how I'm going to do that. Just a really, really light spritz and we'll stamp that right there. So you can see how you get a much more watercolor effect when you do, when you spritz it. It just helps kind of mush those colors together. I think it's a nice to have a little bit of, of, uh, of each different type of, um, of effect. So now I'm going to take a yellow and I am going to dip it in color and maybe give it a little bit of orange. But since I can see I have a bead of uh, water there, I don't have to dip the orange. I can just kind of go in there and that's there's enough water on the stamp to pull the pigment off of my crayon. And the watercolor crayons I'm using are by Karen Dosh. They're my favorite brand of watercolor crayons. I find that they release a lot of, um, a lot of pigment. I don't like how I kind of had those two lined up, so I think maybe I'll throw another one in there just to kind of break it up a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with some foliage. And for foliage, I have, because I have both of these sets I'm using, um, I've got a double leaf and then I've got a larger single leaf, so it gives me a lot of options as far as tucking these in. I'm going to start with a double leaf because that one's bigger, and I'm going to ink it up with this kind of olive green watercolor crayon. You could also do this with um, any water-based markers uh, for a very similar effect. You could use, you know, stamping ones like your Tombows. Um, there's a lot of, like, kind of uh, smaller companies coming out with markers that are really good and really cheap. Um, like a Hoo Hoo has a set that's really inexpensive. Or you could even use like Mr. Sketch or, you know, whatever you find in your kid's marker bag, really. It's going to work fine. Now I'm going to go again with the olive because I want to make sure I keep repeating the colors that I've been using. But I want to darken it a little bit, give it a little freshness. I'm going to add a little bit of this more intense green, more Christmas green color. And I'm going to get that in there a few times. Now, again, you can always look at your registration mark to figure out where the bottom of any of your leaves are. That's helpful when you're trying to tuck something in and you're kind of in a small spot and you don't want to, you know, you just want to maybe not cover up everything you just spent a lot of time working on. So I'm just going to try to tuck a few of these in and around. And it's okay to go over the wrought iron because you'd be able to see through those. Um, and then there's this other little guy here. It's like a little fern kind of. I'm going to do him with just that green. And it's this smaller so I can kind of get in um, in spots where I wouldn't be able to with the other stamps just because it's, it's smaller. And don't worry if you seem to um, you know, have any blobs or maybe you have something that's a little too sharp. You'll be able to soften stuff later. And you can also fill in with a paintbrush. So if you're like, oh, I got that little gap there, but I'm afraid to stamp on it because I'm afraid if I do, I'm going to get too much in there. You can do that with a paintbrush after. So don't worry. And we'll throw one in there. And I just like how they stamp a little bit different each time. So it's really kind of like a painting. So now what I can do is I can take a small pointy brush and this is just a synthetic brush. I would recommend like a golden Taclon brush, something with um, with a fine tip. And I can go in and I can say, hmm, I think I'd like to turn this a little bit more watercolory looking. So all I'm doing is going in with water and I am activating the uh, the pigment. Because when you stamp it on, it doesn't lock into the paper as much as it would if you had brushed it on. So look, you get that beautiful watercolor look. Um, you can have it as mushy or as crisp as you want. And if that happens and you get colors uh, blending together, all you have to do is grab a tissue or a paper towel and just blot and you can lift that up. And then if you're thinking, oh no, I lost my color. I wanted some more orange there. That's no problem because just like a watercolor pan, like, you know, watercolor paint, you probably have at home or maybe your kids do. I, I can pick up the color right from the tip of this, just like I was using a set of watercolor paints 
and I can go and fill in anything I want. So you have a lot of flexibility here. And if you don't have a lot of ink pads, but you have some markers or you have some watercolors, this is a great way to stretch your art supply. And if I wanna go in and just fill in a few things, all I have to do is just pick up that, um, that pigment with my brush and I can sneak in there and add any little bits of color that I want. And of course, you don't have to do any of this brush work if you don't want to, that's completely optional. But I think it gives you a nice full look. Now something else that's kind of pretty in this stamp set is this little um, like viney flourish. I think flourishes look great and it's a great way to like, kind of branch out and fill out an area. And I'm just gonna take this dark um, kind of grayed brown and I just dipped it and colored it, same as we've been doing. And I am going to throw this in a few places and it's okay if it goes off of the design. I'm just looking at that registration mark to figure out where I want it to poke out of. And I, didn't, I only inked that up one time. Now, if you're worried about getting a thick line like that, you could stamp it on a scrap first and then, um, and then stamp it down. Now we're gonna put something in the vase, otherwise it's gonna look funny that it's white. Um, so, because we can clearly see some of our foliage through it. So what I like to do is take a, one of these watercolor crayons and just color directly. All right, I'm just gonna go in there. I could scribble, scribble it on a plate or a palette and bring the color over that way, but this is so easy, right? It's like coloring in your coloring book. It's not a big deal. And I can just go and kind of liquefy that. Now I'm just kind of going around my um, foliage that I could see through there. So I want it to just kind of look like there's some dirt in there, but um, nothing too, you know, nothing too fancy. Now, if that's too dark for you, you can lighten it by going in and just kind of scrubbing a little bit with your brush. And what that does is it, it breaks up the pigment a little bit, and then you can just press your trusty paper towel and you can lighten it up so you get just a little bit of a lighter look. So they're very easy to work with. They're more easy to work with than inks and watercolors because they don't dig in, they don't like seep into the paper fibers and stain. So you have a little more open time. So um, we want, want to kind of let that dry, especially the areas up here. But what we can do while we're waiting is add a little shadow. So I'm just gonna, you can take a, um, a gray crayon if you want to, but I'm just gonna use that same brown I used and a little bit of blue and that's gonna make me a gray. Um, and if, you know, if that seems confusing, then just go ahead and grab whatever color you want really. And I am going to make a little palette here. So I just scribbled it on my ceramic uh, plate there and I am just going to add some shadow underneath my arrangement so let's pretend that it's on hanging on a window and you know it's leaving a little shadow that's all I'm doing there okay just putting that shadow I think I'm gonna dry this really quick because I want to make sure that my watercolor has a chance to dry And then I want to just give the hint of some windows and, you know, like window shades or window shutters. That's what I mean. So I'm going to take that blue crayon again, because you want to repeat your colors whenever you can. Um, and that goes for if you're using stamping ink or whatever. Uh, you want to keep repeating the colors so your project is harmon harmonious. And I am just going to give the impression of, a win of some window glass here. Okay, so we got some... We've got this blue window glass. It's actually clear, but it's reflecting the light of the day. So it would be clear. I mean, it would show blue. And then I'm gonna pick up some of that gray that I made. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of little lines coming out from the side, like louvers on a shutter. We don't have a lot of room. We just need to give the impression. Okay, we don't need to put a lot of, a lot of detail in here. Just give the impression of having some shutters there. And then what we're going to do on the bottom is give the impression of bricks. So to do that, we need to have a brick color. And if you have a perfect brick color, that's great, but I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna take this brown, um, take a little bit of red, and a little of that, that brownish, grayed brownish color we were using. So I have a color that ties into what we've already been doing. And my paper's dry. So I'm just gonna mix this up here. And then I'm gonna use my flat brush to make a brick pattern. So I'm gonna make little school rectangles here little row of rectangles then I'll do an offset row of rectangles underneath and it's okay if you get messed up on your design it doesn't have to be perfect in fact 
I think it looks better the the less perfect it is and just make sure you get a little of that color under your um, under your window there separate the shutters and that's all there is to it so after you've done this uh, to we're gonna be making a card with it and all I did to finish off my cards was to ink the edges with an ink pad you might have these old ink pads from back in the day these are the whispers ink pads and I just re-ink them with whatever dye ink I have the thing I love is a spongy um, hard spongy applicator because it's perfect for direct inking techniques for I have a really easy time with this for some reason and then what we're going to do is emboss a piece of your just craft card stock and I just used a like a wood grain embossing folder and then I like to when I'm doing some embossing especially if I'm doing some cards where I really want my stamping to be highlighted maybe I'm making a batch of them I will just emboss a panel and then I will dry brush some paint over it and I'm doing a dark color so I can dry brush white so it kind of gives me that whitewash fence look kind of like um you know it's a country themed card it's a country summer card and you know I think of growing up in the country I think of you know um just like lazy days by the strawberry patch walking over to my grandmother's visiting her you know there's always like you know boards on the barn they're all kind of like chippy paint just very rustic and summery looking and I just I just love to grab that you know that that sort of imagery and use it on my summery cards and messy is better you want that paint to look old peeled and and everything and I'm not worrying about the center because I am going to be gluing um, so I used acrylic paint my brush goes right in the water and then I wash it right after I am done another reason I like to work on these notepads is because when I've got a messy um, paper I can tear off that top sheet and keep on working and not get paint on my paper where I don't want it this is still wet but I've got my hot glue gun plugged in so I can still make this card you probably would want to let it dry at home but I want to make sure that I can show you this card start to finish um, I'm just gonna do some hot glue on the back I love hot glue for embossed panels because it really marries all those textures whereas um, a regular adhesive sometimes can't um, can't glue this to that when you've got raised edges and I'm just gonna try to center it up before the glue dries and there we go my glue stick was running out so I'm just gonna sneak a little bit more back there and then we will put on our main panel again we're going on a bumpy panel so hot glue is really helpful anytime you've got it like a warped panel because you've done a lot of like messy mixed media wet techniques or you've got an embossed panel hot glue cannot be beat and it's so inexpensive um, and really that's all there is to it and I've got a fun card to send out and I'm still using up those card bases if you <laughs> have been following along here for any amount of time um, but let's take a look at our cards um, again this is the the moms and I did a combination of the brick pattern um, in the uh, the white vinyl just so you can kind of see your white shutters just so you can kind of see this one I just did very simply with some lines just to signify maybe some white siding or clapboards there um, this one I did with the geranium sets and the um, I did a, a brick technique oh I just used a regular old sponge and I sponged on some of the green crayon that's all I that's all I did for that uh, very very easy to do here again we have the thorny rose set and I kind of forgot to put my windows until the end and I just added a little bit of blue uh, and that worked out fine so really don't don't stress about your background when you're doing this technique just um, uh, you know just hint like this I hinted at like ground and sunshine really I just wanted to keep it simple because these are really really fun to play with and this last one of course was the first one I did with the auntie's strawberry garden set like I said before I'm gonna link up all of these stamp sets I used in the video description make sure you check out the video description because I also have um, a discounts for you and um, ways you can save more on your peg stamp order thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial until next time happy crafting <laughs>